every scientist I have talked to, every science type I've talked to, has been in wholesale agreement with you, with what you said when you spoke to the C2ST gang a few weeks ago, which was that science education is a social justice issue. So what do you mean by science education is a social justice issue? Our world and and microcosmically our uh, our country as a great example has incredible disparity and in, in a lot of facets from economics to uh, to social status and part of that is because there are different groups of people that have access to technology that have access to knowledge that have access to technical understanding of the universe that lets them get ahead. And this, this has a history uh, based in education of who is able to do that. So our, our country has kept back both actively and passively uh, education of minorities for centuries. I think that's part of what links science education to social justice. Now, I, I, mean, I know people who would might suggest that the arts are equally useful to society and have certainly been traditionally more accessible to traditionally underserved populations. And that it's, uh, the question is what methods are most mm -hmm. effective in, the, in the uplifting the people. Now, I'd like it to be the case that arts are equally as impactful, but I think we live in a technocratic society which means that I, th I think that our society, because of because we like having convenience, because we like being able to do things like go to the moon, um, there, I think there is, on a larger scale, more value in our society placed on that than in the arts. Well, if you believe that whole moon thing. Uh, yes, <laughs> if you believe that, yeah. <laughs> if you believe that, all right, fine, that's what you do, that's what you do. But what I, I also thought that you were part of your point was that science education, to the extent that it promotes critical thinking, right. if, uh, a belief and insistence on empiricism at all, that, that it was useful to the world in that regard, that useful to affected communities. Oh yeah, so uh, science education could be going from being a toddler and going growing up to being an astronaut or to be a professor, or it could just mean that you grow up and you have some kind of other expertise that you get paid for, but you have uh, a scientific consciousness. Scientific consciousness. What? Like be, being being conscious of the science in the world and that's going on in the world around you, right? Being aware of it. So I think to like to be super active members of society that bring to bear everything that we can on decisions that we make as a group. I think that having a scientific consciousness or scientific acumen helps that. It does not mean that you have to be a professional scientist to do it. But I think just having that, like you said, scientific literacy, I think that's that's what we need to have. We need everybody to be on that sort of same level. In your day-to-day -day life, how was your scientific literacy useful to you today? Just having a, a, um, a bullshit detector, man. you know, like just being able to be having a level of skepticism that lets you say, does that really make sense? Well, I can, can you, if you can do back of the envelope calculations to see if somebody claiming that this is going to cost that much based on what you know, that's like, that's a relatively simple task that we could be teaching everyone in our schools about. And then they can go and say, when someone on TV or someone in politics or somewhere else says, well, this is going to cost that much, and be like, well, is it really? And then it all, and then it also gives you a way to uh, a sense of how to do research to find out if you're skepticism is right or wrong. I must say that I'm a, just a tiny bit surprised because I would think that as a scientist, you pretty much are skeptical about absolutely everything until it is proven and to the satisfaction of peer review and then check or uh, survive the test of time. So yes, and I, and I guess there are different levels of skepticism. So, you know, there in, in, in science, what we, we don't really have, you know, people talk about like, this is a fact or this is a law, but the truth is we don't understand the entire universe in its totality at every layer. And we never really will because there will always, almost certainly, there will always be something new to understand. What percentage of the uh, universe can you physicists describe? 
Mm, so right now, we're pretty sure we understand about 5% of the universe. Okay, just to make sure what you say. Yeah. When yeah. you say we don't understand the whole universe, you really mean we really don't. Okay. But anyway, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we don't get, yeah. But about skepticism, that, that you don't you don't think that you people should become skeptical of everything? Oh no, I, I mean I think people should be skeptical of everything. I just I just think that there are levels of skepticism, right? That it's a it's a it's a gradation. It's not um I, it's not just saying, oh, I'm cynical, so I believe everything is wrong. But it, it's just, it's having a habit, the, the physics mentality or the science mentality or the, the set of skills, I think, revolves around habit that we develop that says, let's question this and see if we can figure out from some kind of fundamental first principles if this thing makes sense. So does the fact that you are a physicist affect the way you browse the morning news Sometimes it's my physics background. Sometimes it's being a black male. Sometimes it's being an American. These all these things differently shade how I look at the morning news. Um, a lot of it, I, th I think, the physics perspective helps me have a sometimes a little bit of patience and helps me say, well, there's probably something more going on underneath that headline than what's really there. Right. When you read the headlines, you like because you know they're they're trying they're doing clickbait. And and there and if it's not clickbait, sometimes there's just an agenda. And I think we really need to. I think scientific literacy helps you get through that first barrier, which is saying, "Is this person just want me to believe something, or is there something true in this article?" Right. And and I'm not. And this isn't just physics or science that does this. You, you know, when you when you learn how to break down thoughts and ideas. Uh, whether it's in school or whether it's wherever you are, it doesn't have to be school where you learn all this stuff. But when you when you learn to think critically and look at things and not take them at face value, I think that's that's the value. That's science has one clear method, one sort of t true and tested method of being able to do that. That can be applied to other areas of our lives that aren't just science.